met him, he was very isolated. When someone comes into a nursing home, they start to feel very disconnected from their lives, from who they've always been. If you can imagine somebody who hasn't recognized their loved one in five or six years. You know, I've been strong for four years. I just can't take it anymore. Music can do things which language can't. When I learned that maybe more than 90 percent of a resident's time is spent idle, um, well, let's try this and see what difference the iPods would make. I have one resident that barely opened her eyes. She didn't respond. Nothing worked. It was amazing once we put the iPod on her. She started shaking her feet, getting no off. <laughs> I'm seeing her all over again. I'm going to take the music for one second, OK? Just huh? to ask you a few questions, OK? Yes or no question. What, what does music do, do to you? It gives me the feeling of love, no, no mass. Because right now, the world needs to come into music singing. you got beautiful music in. Beautiful, oh, lovely. And uh, I feel the band of love, the dream. Well, music therapy with Alzheimer's patients, something very powerful and primal is at work. This hard part keeps me happy. It keeps me from crying. And when I'm upset, all I have to do is take out my music. And it soothes my nerves, and I go fast asleep. And with an average cost of about $80, um, this is less than most people's daily medication costs. In terms of what difference it makes for the quality of life for an individual who's able to receive this uh, is just immeasurable. So uh, for me, uh, I can't think of any greater value. I'd like to start with a question. How many of you in this room have known or know someone currently living with dementia? Okay. How many of you know someone who provides care for someone with dementia? Okay. So quite a few hands were raised. And it's possible then that for those of you who did raise your hands that you already have an understanding of the challenges presented to our society today as a result of increasing incidence of this disease. What is dementia? Some of you may be asking. So dementia is just a term that we use to describe a variety of different brain disorders that affect memory, thinking, mood, and behavior. There is no cure, and while we have made significant advances in the last number of years in regards to awareness around the disease, as well as methods of alleviating symptoms, we have not arrived. And by that I mean, that we as caregivers, so those of us working in the dementia care field and people who are caring for loved ones at home, often find ourselves searching for the needle in a haystack as a solution uh, for something consistent that will work. So we try anything and everything that we can from a variety of holistic approaches to medications that will slow down the progression or alleviate the symptoms and bring some comfort. But most of these methods are often only met with varying degrees of success. So imagine for a minute someone that you love developing the following symptoms. Memory loss. So forgetting who you are or forgetting which neighborhood they live in or what happened yesterday. Difficulty performing familiar tasks such as how to get dressed or how to cook a meal. The loss of language. So on top of all the other symptoms, they now lose the ability to communicate in the way that they traditionally have. And this makes it very difficult for those of us around them to know what they're thinking. Disorientation to time and place, such as getting lost in their own neighborhood or forgetting what year it is, for example. And finally, possibly one of the most challenging symptoms for the people who love 
people with dementia is the ch drastic changes in mood or personality that can sometimes occur. And that can be characterized by extreme sadness or depression or anger or intense paranoia or suspicion of those around them. So imagine for a minute that someone you love has developed the following, those symptoms and then imagine that you come to an understanding that really there are not a lot of consistent methods of addressing the symptoms in order to alleviate them. It leaves you feeling a bit helpless. Unfortunately, there are 36 million people around the world living with dementia today and they and their loved ones are <coughs> living with that helpless feeling every day. That number is expected to rise to 115 million in our lifetime by the year 2050. In fact, in the time that I've been speaking with you, about three and a half minutes, 52 people around the world have been diagnosed with dementia and their lives have been forever changed. So the work that you saw in the short video that I presented to you at the beginning of my talk highlights the work of Music and Memory. Music and Memory is a nonprofit organization based out of New York, and they are working together with some other organizations in the US to champion the idea of personalized music listening using iPods for residents with dementia who are living in nursing homes. The organization has been doing this work for about five years, and actually recently the idea has been spreading so that it's actually translating to some other contexts as well in the community and in, in the home, in various other community settings. What seems to be having such a tremendous impact with this particular movement is that the personalized playlists that are being created, that is, that the family members and the staff in the nursing homes are working very hard together, sometimes with residents whenever possible, to figure out which music has meant the most to people throughout their lives and they're using that music to, to treat their symptoms. And so why we think this is having such an effect is that it seems that the music that people have connected to throughout their whole lives is acting as a trigger to pull out the people behind the disease. It's infiltrating deep into their memory banks and reconnecting them to their own stories. So how did New Brunswick become involved in the iPod movement, you might be asking. So the Atlantic Institute on Aging heard of Music and Memory's work about a year ago. And we contacted them and began a collaboration. We obtained a grant through a wonderful program that they ca have called the Well-Tuned Project. And we, in that grant, obtained 50 iPods, some iTunes gift cards, as well as much needed training and resources for implementing the program here in New Brunswick. So we split the 50 iPods among three nursing homes. And since January of 2012, the staff and the family members and the resident participants have been working really hard to collect data to measure the outcomes. And so that data is being sent back to Music and Memory, and it's being collaborated along with data from 14 other organizations in the US. And we, so we were the only Canadian um, recipients of this grant, and it's truly been an honor and a privilege for us to be counted among such amazing organizations and to be able to collaborate and learn from them. Many of the organizations are further along in their process than we have been. So the results that we have begun to see in New Brunswick uh, are not unlike the results that we've seen in the video. I wish I could take all night and tell you about all the amazing stories that we have, but I only have time for a few. So I'm going to share with you briefly four examples. So first we have the example of Pat. Pat is a vision impaired resident who was admitted to York Care Center about a year ago. She was slipping quickly into a depression as a result of the challenges um, presented to adjusting to life in a nursing home until we gave her her iPod. The first day we gave her her iPod, she listened to it for a good long time and then she began to grin from ear to ear when, when the RN asked her how she felt. And she said, I really liked it. It made me feel like I was home. Next, we have Ida. Ida has become a bit of a poster child for the iPod project in New Brunswick. She made it to the national news back in May, and she's quite proud of that. So Ida was experiencing regular insomnia, and she doesn't have dementia, but she herself um, made the suggestion that she might try using the iPod. And she has been doing so since about February to a large degree of success. She doesn't have insomnia anymore, and she's feeling more like her old self again. This is Bill. Bill is a resident of Drew Nursing Home with dementia 
who was exhibiting wandering behaviors. And so when Bill would wander, this became a particular issue during meal times. He would wander and he would miss his meals. And he was rapidly losing weight, as was noted by the dietitian. And so the staff collaborated and decided that they would like to try the iPod on him at meal times. And as you can see, it worked, and it's worked consistently. Um, not only does he eat most of his meals now and happily listening to his music, but the staff tell us that he turns up at the dining room asking for the iPod. And he was, um, he was able to gain five pounds in the first month that they administered the iPod at mealtimes. And then finally, we have the example of Barbara. Barbara is also um, a resident of Drew Nursing Home. She's 72 years old, and she has early onset Alzheimer's disease. Barbara was always known as a leader in her community. She has three university degrees, and she was known to everyone as someone with a very joyful spirit, very positive. This unfortunately was replaced by Barbara now being unable to reason and react normally in most situations. So she would often be agitated and she would yell out and the staff at the nursing home were having a very hard time calming her and finding consistent ways that would work to calm her down. So they tried the iPod and lo and behold, uh, they were astounded by the fact that they, every time they put the iPod on Barbara, she would immediately become excited and animated and she would start to sing and she would be happy. And she was also responsible for some many, uh, many um, spontaneous sing-alongs in the dining room as a result because everyone wanted to be a part of what she was feeling and hearing. So um, for me, that's a very powerful example because not only has it reconnected, probably most importantly, that it has reconnected Barb to her joyful spirit and who she is. But in addition, the Drew Nursing Home staff have let us know that they've documented at least 20 occasions in which extra medication was not needed for Barbara as a result because they used the iPod instead. So I wish I could tell you more stories, but I can't. I don't have a lot of time. What I want to do now before I conclude my talk is I want to invite you to come on a short journey with my friend and musician, Matthew Pearson. Matt's going to take us through an experience that I think will help us all firsthand to feel the immense power of music in connecting us all to our emotions and to our own stories. Check. <laughs> She's just a 
mat. So I have a couple more questions for you before I conclude. How many of you experienced more than one emotion when Matt was playing? <laughs> How many of you thought of more than one memory? Right. So music is very powerful. And when I was trying to think of a way to conclude my talk today, I came to the conclusion that I wanted to share a personal story with you. I was trying to think of all the scientists and what the scientists have said, but I think a personal story is more fitting. So I had the normal pre presentation jitters that I normally get as I was trying to prepare came to a head yesterday. And um, I was trying to think of ways that I could kind of get myself into a better headspace. And it occurred to me, I'm going to use my music. So I started using my own personal music to try to pull me out of the tizzy that I had myself in. And some of you may um, have been listening to the news over the last couple of days. And you may have realized that the East Coast music scene has lost a very famous icon. Raylene Rankin lost her battle with cancer on Sunday. And the Rankin family is um, a piece of, the Rankin family's music is music that highlights many, many uh, days and many, many memories in my past. So being an East Coast girl, grew up listening to the Rankin family. So I started, as I was trying to process this news, I started listening to the Rankin family's uh, music. And a funny thing happened, maybe not so funny. I started to reconnect to my own story and to who I am. So whether it was um, thinking about the time when I was 12 years old and I got up at 6 in the morning to stand in line for rank and family tickets, um, that describes my determination and my confidence that I will always get what I want. And uh, whether it be um, memories of family gatherings at Christmas in which the rank and family music often featured or driving in, car, in the car with my dad and my mom and my siblings, um, I was able to remember that there are many people supporting me throughout my, as I prepared to talk to you this evening. And so I guess I wanted to share this story because it hit home with me that that's exactly what I'm talking to you about today. It's the ability of music not only to help people who are living with dementia and a variety of others. Scientists have been telling us for years, and music therapists, that music has a tremendous ability to heal us and to both physically and emotionally but it also has the ability just to help with our overall well-being and help us to achieve our full potential. So I hope that you'll take what I've talked about with you tonight and try to think of ways in which you might apply it to your own life and to the lives of those you love. Thank you.